Bidvest Group reported a 37.5% increase in headline earnings per share to 742.3 cents, while first half profit jumped 37.4% to 399.1 million rand, lifted by the sale of 50% of its shareholding in Mumbai International Airport. Bidvest, which makes more than a quarter of its sales overseas, said sales rose 15.1% to 67.3 billion rand, helped partly by favorable currency swings. Well, gentlemen, let's go into Bidvest. What your thoughts are, Chris, from a valuation perspective? Well, I think the figure that one really has to, to, to focus on is the headline earnings per share, which is something I think more is pertains to more the existing operations, shareholdings, etc., and what you would expect going forward of 13.6%. There are some extraordinary things that um, you, you would be included in the 37.5% increase. Um, but, but I agree, these things can be confusing. You need to look at them all and try and unpack the differences between them. Earn, do you agree? Or are you focusing <laughs> well, on look, the adjusted diluted headline earnings per yes, share? Yes, I've got, I've got a, geez, I mean, it's, you've got a lot of these ratios, a lot of these lines, and actually... We'll this, wait till we get to Sun International. This is, exactly. <laughs> this is not one of the worst you've seen so far, but I prefer to look at that adjusted number, which, which actually puts into, into account, uh, you know, the once-off items in the business, which kind of normalizes the, the numbers as well. That's what I usually prefer to look at, looking at the adjusted figure. Mm -hmm. Bidvest, key challenges over the period, obviously, weaker economic environment in yeah. Europe <coughs> and Brian Joffe, the CEO, saying that that environment is expected to persist. Persist, exactly. They've got a very nice uh, international footprint, a mixture of the developed world and emerging markets. It's not that they've gone only into a single country. And, and this is, I think, to my mind, the, the overall impression um, or, or, or the get of Bidvest, uh, we have always got a combination of organic growth and also a little bit of acquisitions as well. Um, a, a very diverse group and something that's still very much a South African company embedded in the South African economy. And it's one of those that you would say, right, it, it's really a very good reflection of the South African economy in the sense of the overseas assets and also the Nice mix. Oh, and Joffe saying that uh, Southern African trading conditions had improved, but sectors such as light manufacturing, construction, and discretionary consumer spending remain weak. Absolutely. I mean, if you're talking about the construction space, you've seen what's happening in South Africa. Most of the constructors are going overseas now for business. You saw that in uh, Wilson Bailey, you saw that in Avenge. So if you're an operator in South Africa, there's definitely quite a bit of a squeeze in terms of new pro projects coming through. And, uh, you know, I, I think the environment could continue to be challenging, especially if there's no improvement in, uh, in, in Europe per se. Asia, though, is yeah. one of the jewels in, in the crown. It is one of the jewels in the crown. I think... Um, you know, they did sell off some of their stake in, in, in the um, Mumbai airport, uh, as far as I understand, half their stake. Um, and, and I think they've done quite well out of that, uh, you know, in the, the end. And that's one of the reasons why you've got 37.5% uh, in, increase in... If you strip it out, well. you've got 13.6. Exactly. Um, we don't want to so go back to that debate. <laughs> no, exactly. But, but the point is, is that there are growth areas and... Uh, not not only in the sense that there's more acquisitions that they can make in that area, but the economies themselves are growing, and also the the the, the, the sectors that they're involved are also are, are, are growing. So there's a lot of um, in in the areas that they're involved in where the wind is really they've got a lovely tailwind to actually help boost it. It's the right the the the, the, the right uh, economic conditions to actually bolster these businesses and, and, and expect to see continued growth out of these uh, areas. We're sitting with a PE of just over 15. Is Bidvest, in your opinion, expensive for the level of growth that we're achieving? Now, I'll tell you what, Bidvest is like, I, I like the fact that it's so diversely uh, spaced out in terms of operations. It's a business that easily has 50, 50 subsidiaries under its umbrella. Mm. Asia Pacific, you'll find them, you'll find them in Europe. They've got a big food business, nicely defensive. So if you're looking for a name that's not going to have very volatile earnings, you know, this is the stock you want to be in. Yeah. From no, a valuation I'm, perspective? Valuation, I'm not worried. I think it's delivering the growth. Normally, I'd worry about a diverse conglomerate that you think, can you get all this? But I think Brian Joffe knows how to run these kinds of businesses. And um, and, and, and this this is something that one would, would go... I, I well, in this uncertain it, environment, you get a diversified port portfolio exactly. in one company. This is like a unit trust in its own right that you can actually just buy. I think it should be part of everybody's core 
core holdings, in other words, in, a, in, a, in any portfolio, you'd want some bit vest uh, in, in that portfolio. I want to understand though, should you be buying it at current levels? Yes. Um, look, from a trading perspective, I'm looking for bid vest pull back to 167.37. That's where I'll be looking to get involved. I think the market is this to start of this week, we started off softer. And I think uh, Bitvest needs to pull back a little bit more before I get involved. It's trading near uh, probably a nine month high. And from a trading pers perspective, from when you say it needs to pull back a little, what are we talking about here? I need the stock to come back to 167.37. That's where I'm seeing support in the name. And uh, if it does break through there, then I'll be getting involved. But if you've got a long term view in the stock, I think there's no harm getting involved in here because, as we've said, the price earnings multiple is, is not so challenging. Well, there you go. Trading perspective versus long-term uh, holding you, strategy. Yeah, you just buy this if you... If, you and know, a, and so not a shabby dividend yield there as well, 2.79%. You're getting growth above inflation and it's a decent dividend yield, etc. Have we already answered the question then? So hot or, with hot or a not special in the dividend book? of 80 cents. <laughs> yeah. Look, I need a nice level to get involved in. From a trading book, I'm not going to be jumping into it yet. So it's not steaming Besides, today, I mean, the, mar the market's down about 1.2 odd percent and Bitverse is not down that much. Yeah. So I needed to, to give me a bit more facts. Chris, can, can I preempt you on this the, one? The relative strength, I think, is still showing strength on a three, three of you. You can get enough. Hot, say hot. Hot, yes. Pile in, boot, <laughs> pile in boots and all. Would no. you be that emphatic about it? No, no, I would, I would try and average cost. I'll, I'll 